I'm here with Jennifer Corriero, of, founder of Taking It Global, to explain what Taking It Global is. Jennifer, please. Hi. Taking It Global is an online community that is dedicated to helping inspire, inform, and involve young people in shaping the world. Okay, what does that mean? We really want to activate a sense of citizenship and social responsibility and, and leadership. And so our site is for people that want to make a difference, they want to do something, um, but they sort of feel isolated or they, they don't they don't feel supported. So we have a whole set of ideas and project pages and linkages. Um, so we're, we're connecting so, through our site. So what's, so I log on to your site, what do I find? I'm somebody who wants to make a difference. I'm What, what age am I? What age are you? You're, let's you're, say you're between 16 and 24. And depending on the day, let's say it's December 1st, you're going to find a big spotlight about World AIDS Day. And you're going to join a live chat discussion with people from Africa um, sharing their stories about AIDS. You're going to hear from someone from UNICEF. And then you're going to learn about a project that is all around promotion um, of HIV prevention projects and, and really encouraging um, people to sort of get involved and become more aware about different issues. Every month we highlight different internationally recognized days. How many people do you have logging on? Um, the, the website, at any moment in time, there's at least about 600 people on, on the site that are logged in. Uh, but we get a million hits a day, and there's 170,000 members. From One million hits per day. And wh what countries are they from? Where are they? We have members from over 200 countries, 30% from North America, 25% from Africa, 22% from Asia. So the concentration is North America? North America, then uh, Africa and okay. Asia. I mean, a huge percentage of, of kids are logging on from the developing world. And they're seeing this as a space for them to have a voice, really trying to promote youth voice. And what, what concrete has come out of it, or what comes out of it in concrete terms? Well, we've really helped to catalyze and support and enable thousands of youth-led projects, development projects around the world, whether it be from fundraisers, uh, community awareness programs, but we've also supported different global coal uh, coalitions and campaigns uh, for the World Summit on the Information Society, a big UN summit. We helped to mobilize thousands of youth to have a, a voice in this policy process. So, so it's all, so if I log, when I log on the site, I have my cause that I'm very concerned about freedom of expression, for example, if I log onto the site, there, there are sort of the tools of uh, how to run an emailing list. Is that yeah, the kind of thing it is? Yeah, and we have a petitions tool. We've actually just launched a really exciting tool. It's called Commit. And so actually you can um, invite people to commit to promoting freedom of expression and um, you can send it out to your friends. We're trying to create it uh, in a really viral way and very soon it'll be launching as an application on Facebook. So we hope that'll help to extend the network. Okay. Um, and how did you get involved in this? Why did you start this? And when did you start it? I started it when I was 19, after years of high school experience where I learned about the power of volunteerism. So many of our institutions, um, especially in um, countries where we have so much privilege, yet there's so many gaps, so many needs. And when a young person gets involved, they can offer such a sense of enthusiasm and help to revitalize a sense of hope and um, optimism in addressing the ta and tackling the challenges, whether it be of poverty, hunger, homelessness, environmental degradation. I mean, without the force of all people getting involved I don't see hope for the future and so we can't really afford not to have a society where people feel that that their voice counts that they can make a difference and I felt that we weren't th there was no real way that technology was being leveraged to actually help people understand their ability to contribute to okay society. what's interesting about it is uh, what I see is two different aspects to it the first aspect is this toolbox. I, I, I have a cause. I want to change something. Maybe it's a highway is going through a, a, a forest area in my local town. I can log on to Taking It Global and figure out how to write a petition, how to organize it. And the other aspect is I want to do something, but I'm not sure what it is. I, I feel I want to help out, and that's where you're trying to help guide people. Yeah, and one thing that we've created is actually a guide to action, and we've launched uh, different versions of it. We've just launched one on uh, cl climate change, and right now as we speak in um, in Bali, when we're talking about the climate change negotiations, there's hundreds of young people who are organizing um, and trying to sort of get their governments to commit to things, and on a very local level, let's say organizing a school project or trying to um, help support a, a small orphanage, and this, this guide to action gives a lot of different ideas and examples and case studies. We've also done one on HIV AIDS. We've done one on the UN Millennium Development Goals, focusing on poverty, and then we just have a generic one. So this guide is something that we see as an evolving piece. Um, so so this, is, this is sort of the next stage. What, what is taking it global 2.0? It's Moving forward, it's really about, when we started, there wasn't really a strong presence of existing online hubs and networks. And, and now there's, the, the world has changed. So we want to continue to help interlink and build upon existing networks, whether it be councils, student associations, 
these clubs and we really want to be the place of destination for young people who want to make a difference so that we can actually help to amplify voices and efforts uh, so that we can see that uh, collectively our individual actions can make a big impact. Okay, so you're trying to reach out to who now? You're trying to reach out to student councils and these sort of people right now? It's sort of bringing it into the real world? Is that what it is? Yeah, and as well, actually, be reaching out to more youth networks and youth coalitions, but also reaching into whether it be businesses, uh, whether it be government agencies, whether it be nonprofit associations, and trying to help them better engage the young people in their communities and advisory roles, uh, helping them shape and design programs. Is We're all around like health promotion, crime prevention through social development, is there, inclusion. Is, is there a concrete example of one where you've sort of led a youth uh, voice into one of these more traditional organizations like the UN or, or something in, like that? In the UN specifically, we actually facilitated the Youth Caucus for, for the World Summit on the Information Society. We built on a lot of the experiences um, since the Earth Summit in Rio. Um, there emerged the World Summit on Sustainable Development and we became actively involved in supporting the Youth Caucus there and leveraging our tools and, and the group that emerged from that created a whole white paper, a, a working paper that advised the Millennium Development Goals and how in order to achieve all of these goals, it's actually critically important for us to involve young people as partners in development and not just seen as sort of the victims of the problems or the perpetrators of, of the problems that, um, that exist, but they're actually key players. And so we've been able to work with a whole range of UN agencies, including UNESCO and, and UNICEF. Um, in, in the UNESCO process, they had a small island summit, and um, we actually became the online platform to support all the young people attending the conference and to encourage them to, to share their experiences and sort of use the power of of, of online connections as a way to um, have their heads of state and the representatives of their countries hear their voices. Excellent. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks.